Hello everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com and today I am going to talk about the unique Heckler & Koch LEM trigger as well as the H&K P30SK pistol. The LEM trigger is a really interesting concept that I think a lot of people either misunderstand or maybe aren't aware of at all. It is available as an option on several H&K pistols. My focus for this video will mostly be on the LEM system, but since a lot of you guys have asked me specifically about the P30SK, I will share some of my thoughts on that at the end. Since the 1990s, H&K has offered multiple action configurations for each of their hammer fire pistols. For example, if you go shopping for a P30, the most common variant you'll run into is a double action, single action with a decocker button on the back of the slide. You can also get that with or without a frame mounted thumb safety. But if you look around long enough, you might also find a P30 V1. That means it has the law enforcement module or LEM trigger. The LEM version has no safety or decocker. It's easily mistaken for a double action only, but that's really only half true. If you just pick up the gun and pull the trigger, you're gonna get a fairly stiff 12 pound double action pull. However, when you rack the slide as if you were actually loading the gun, the slide pre-cocks the mainspring about halfway. That gives you a trigger with a lot of pre-travel and very little resistance, followed by a clean five and a half pound break. The reset point is very short, so you only have to let the trigger out a few millimeters for your next shot. The only time you actually get that 12 pound trigger pull is if you do a restrike. So like if you run into a failure to fire and you wanna pull the trigger and try that round again, you'll get the full double action pull. Shooting an LEM feels a lot like a single action pistol with a first shot that has the length of travel of a double action, but not the weight of a double action. It's kind of like a DASA for people who don't like DASA or who are really bad about remembering to decock a DASA. Since it is a true hammer fired pistol, you can pin the hammer with your thumb to disable it while you put it in the holster. I first heard about the LEM trigger several years ago when Daryl Bolke wrote an article about it for pistoltraining.com. Daryl is a big fan of LEM, especially for law enforcement. In his experience investigating and being involved in shootings, there's a lot of chaos before and after the shots are actually fired. That's when stress often causes fingers to end up on triggers when the shooter really didn't intend for them to be there and they really shouldn't be there. Some use of force researchers believe the distance a trigger has to travel matters at least as much as trigger weight in terms of mitigating stress-related unintentional discharges. The LEM trigger is not any heavier than a typical striker fire trigger, but it's got a lot more pre-travel for that first shot. Theoretically, that's an added opportunity for you to think, is this really what I want to be doing right now? As private citizens, we don't have to do things like chase suspects with pistols in our hands. We don't have to do a no-look holster while also trying to put handcuffs on somebody. But I think the logic of the LEM trigger still has some benefits outside of that law enforcement context, making the trigger hard to press when you don't want to and simultaneously easy to press when you do want to is a tough thing to pull off mechanically speaking. In that respect, the LEM trigger is a very impressive effort. Based on my range time with this gun so far, I can see a lot of potential in the LEM trigger, but it does take some getting used to. I've only got about 500 rounds through this gun and I just now am starting to feel like I'm getting the hang of it. I would prefer more of like a rolling break, like a light double action, and I prefer for the reset to be a little stronger. Apparently both of those things are possible to achieve with the right combination of factory parts from H&K. As it is, I still much prefer a good DASA, but I've got a lot of trigger time with DASAs. They're not for everybody. For a novice shooter, I think an LEM trigger would be a much better trigger for learning the pistol basics. It's also an ideal option for somebody who really likes the simplicity of striker fired pistols, but they also want the added safety of that exposed hammer. H&K offers a few versions of the LEM trigger. This pistol has the most common variant known as the light LEM. It's also available with a heavier weight or with less pre-travel. You can get an LEM trigger on any of the P30 pistols as well as the P2000, the H&K 45, and the USP series. 
it's not always easy to find an LEM variant for sale, so you might have to have it specially ordered. Or in some cases, it is possible to convert a DASA to LEM if you have the right parts. HKparts.net is a good resource for that kind of stuff. Okay, now let's take a look at this particular gun, the HK P30SK. The original P30 came out back in 2006, but they did not make the SK until 2015. This is what HK considers a subcompact version of the P30. It's a bit large for a subcompact. If you consider the Glock 26 to be the unofficial standard for a subcompact double stack nine, the P30SK is taller and a bit thicker, but it's not quite big enough to be a compact either. It ships with two magazines. One is a flush fitting with an optional finger extension floor plate that holds 10 rounds of nine millimeter. The other mag is an extended 13 rounder. Fully loaded with that mag, the P30SK weighs 31.4 ounces, which is exactly the same weight as a loaded Gen 5 Glock 19. The SK has the same modular grip features as the full-size P30. It comes with small, medium, and large back straps, as well as three different size options for the right and left grip panels. The sights are decent, but pretty basic with photoluminescent dots. The slide release and mag release are both ambidextrous. The paddle style mag release is a somewhat unusual feature these days. Rather than a button you push in, it is a lever that you push down to release the mag. I don't know if there's a whole lot I can say about this gun that hasn't already been said about the P30 series. Overall, the ergonomics are excellent, except that it could use a little more grip texture, especially up here on the upper part of the frame where your support hand makes contact. I don't think the paddle style mag release is the deal breaker that some people make it out to be. However, I do have to shift my grip slightly to reach it, which is something I very rarely have to do with other handguns. The original P30 has a reputation for quality and durability that's almost unmatched among other modern polymer framed handguns. Some consider it to be the pinnacle of hammer fire duty pistol design and engineering. I don't believe the SK has been as thoroughly vetted as the full-size P30, but it's essentially the same design with a shorter slide and barrel and a shorter grip, so I would expect similar long-term performance. The P30 SK is also one of just a handful of hammer-fired subcompact nines in current production. You guys know I would love to see more small hammer-fired pistols, either DASA or DAO or even LEM, but by today's standards, the P30SK is really not all that small. Chopping the grip in the barrel only gets you so far in terms of making the gun easier to conceal. We now have very slim 9mm pistols that sacrifice nothing in terms of ammo capacity and very little in terms of shootability versus an older double stack model like this. And they come from the factory with slide mounted optic cuts. So the P30SK is a really nice pistol, for some of you, it might be the perfect size. It's just what you've been looking for, but considering what else is on the market for nine millimeter carry guns, it feels kind of 10 years behind the curve. And that's really no surprise since the American civilian market has never been a top priority for H and K. But we have seen a few hints in recent years that that might be changing. I'm not holding my breath for a slim, optics ready LEM P30, but if they ever get around to it, I'll be first in line to try one out. Okay guys, that's all I have to say for now about the LEM system and the P30 SK. If you found any of that helpful, hit that thumbs up button, leave us a friendly comment, or you can buy some ammo from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.